Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Dev from Fission 3.0. How are you today, Dev? I'm very good, Tracy. Thanks for having me on. You've had a substantial amount of news flow here in the last two months. In fact, you've had so many news releases. Let's just start there. What do you deem to be the most significant at this moment in time? Well, I just think having raised the money thanks to a higher spot price and having um, money to go explore. And also we brought in a couple of partners to help us. Uh, we have so many projects, so we can't drill them all ourselves. So it's been it's just wonderful to see a renaissance in the industry so we can start drilling some of our valuable projects. Well, I'm so happy that I asked the question that I did there because I thought that your staking of new claims in the Key Lake and Northeast Athabasca areas looked like something very, for us uranium uh, geeks out there, sounded very exciting to me. Can you talk to us about this? Absolutely. You know, our team... Those are key areas. The Northeast is an area where it originally started, you know, Uranium City and everything else. So and people seem to always move on to brighter, shiny thing. We don't work that way. And the Key Lake area is where if you find something there, you have a mill. So both have their own reasons for why we acquired them. One history been neglected. And here there's mills nearby and infrastructure. For those of you out there, an investor, Intel land that are new to uranium and you should be following uranium. Dev is really a, a strong manager and legendary professional in this industry. So on that note, let's talk about the uranium boom. I'm so, I mean, I'm actually hearing millennials send me questions about uranium. And uh, the Sprott Uranium Trust Fund seems to be one of the catalysts for this boom, even though it should be so many other things. Can you talk to us about this? Yeah, it, it's kind of the, the lightning rod. But really what the key is, is that people have realized they want to meet their zero emissions 2050 if they want. Um, to reach some of those ESG goals, you can't count simply on wind and, and the sun. We all like to believe that, but I think it's been a wake up call to realize we have to have um, a, a reliable source, um, what they call base load power, turn it up and down. And it's hit every country, whether it's Japan, France, and now you've got countries, for example, going to Europeans, going to Brussels saying, hey, you've got to include nuclear power in this, otherwise, we're going to freeze to death. Um, and the, United, the biggest thing happened was a couple of days, the United Nations said nuclear power must be a part of our plan to, to combat climate change. So, um, you know, I think a lot of people, we want to believe that you just plug your, you know, the, the car into the air and something magical will happen. <clears throat> I know that even 10% of us bought cars electric, shuts the entire Canadian grid down. It's over, done. No more energy for anything else. So we keep, you know, pushing for more and more energy, and that's what we need. But where is it going to come from? Now, Canada's blessed with hydro, but the rest of the world isn't. So nuclear power is a big part of it. So as you've seen that shift, um, the money has found its way into Peter Groskoff's uh, Sprott Physical Fund. Um, and they, they bought 30-odd million pounds, maybe 34. You know, I'm a big fan of Peter, as you know, because he took us public and um, I think Hadi was a person and uh, well, you know, I think he's a genius. I mean, Sprott's always been ahead of the curve. Um, so what they've done um, is bought all this excess uranium, has driven up the price, which then drives up um, opportunities to raise money. But it all starts with this belief, finally, that we can't count. We can't tell the sun when to shine more. We can't tell the wind because we don't control that. So people realize we must have nuclear power if we're going to reach any of our goals by 2050 of zero or neutral. Uh, it just can't happen. I think you made some very critical points about this critical material. And, uh, you know, the leaders in our market are people who understand the trends and appreciate that there is uh, you know, uranium is required for uh, nuclear energy. And it's so nice to see more media coverage on this. Now, you know everybody in the industry, Deb. So mm -hmm. when you announce that someone new has joined your board, I have to imagine there are substantial world players. Can you talk a little bit about uh, Steve Cochran joining your board, board, please? Well, Steve's been in the capital markets for a long time. And I felt um, I wanted our board to be more entrepreneurial, 
more sensitive to what's going out there. And Steve um, has, you know, worked as a fund manager, a money manager for a very long time, and then has worked uh, not doing this, uh, uh, a battery project called this in Chile. So I think very highly of him as to being aware of what's going on. At the end of the day, a board is to represent the shareholders. And I think he's got a very good idea of what's going out there. And he's been a personal friend of mine for a couple of decades. And so I respect his energy level and he's very bright. Um, and he brings uh, something else to our board that others don't. Well, Dev, we would like you to join us more often to actually discuss uranium and nuclear energy in general. So we're going to have you back here, hopefully in a couple of weeks. But I sure. wanted to ask, are you going to PDAC this year, PDAC 2020, 2022? Oh, well, I hope so. I, I went to the, I, I went to the uh, mining conference in New Orleans and it was so surreal to be walking down aisles and seeing booths. I was like, you know, I don't know what, what I was going through. And uh I am going to go to Mines and Money next week in London um, just to catch up. And I think, you know, I still believe that face-to-face -face is a better way. Uh, people are Zoomed out on Zoom. So I think um, we face-to-face -face is important. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to PDAC, but there's my hope for the Cambridge show will be on. Um, hope we get back to real human-human interface, which I think we do need. Uh, we can do a lot by this, right? But I think at the end of the day, to develop new relationships, it's usually going to be easier. I think 90% of communication is nonverbal. So I think, I think it's going to be good for all of us to, you know, uh, meet people again. Well, as always, Deb, thank you so much. And for everybody out there following Fission 3.0, it's certainly on our radar. Thank you, Deb. Thank you.